Assassin's Creed is Ubisoft Montreal's big title for this holiday and it promises an open world where you get to play as an assassin and you can choose how you want to kill people you can kill anyone you want in any of the three major cities that they have that are built around historical times during the crusades and unfortunately it doesn't actually live up to most of the promise and in fact Assassin's Creed is probably one of the top five most disappointing games of all time when you consider its potential you play as Altair, a member of the Assassin's Organization. Now this is a real organization, and actually the name for Assassin came from this organization back during the time of the Crusades. And most of the things that you see in Assassin's Creed are based on historical fact. If you look at old pictures of Jerusalem, for example, when you see the city, they actually match up very well. Uh, all of the figures that are assassinated in this game are actually historical figures that disappeared around the time that the game took place. They don't necessarily have been killed or, or died in history, but they did have a disappearance around that time. So, uh, they, you know, it links up very well and it definitely has a very rich history to it and, you know, fairly accurate in terms of the historical perspective. And that was something that the team uh, really wanted to focus on. But when you get past all the historical accuracy stuff, you really have to get a game that's good. And that's one of the failures of Assassin's Creed. Now, you can actually climb up any surface that you want. You can run around these big giant cities, and that's a lot of fun. Uh, you're actually climbing on the architecture. So when you're trying to climb up a building, you're going to see like a little jewel or something like that, uh, an ornament that's sticking out of a wall. That's something that you can grab onto and keep pulling yourself up. So you actually have to act almost like a mountain climber or rock climber trying to get up to some of the higher points. And then when you get up to these points, which it is a lot of fun to climb, you'll get this view of the entire city and it's really breathtaking. Unfortunately, then you have to actually go and play the game and that's where things start to fall apart. Now in each of these cities you're going to have different assassination targets and the assassination targets are these nine famous people from the Crusades. Now before you can assassinate a guy you're going to have to study up on them which makes sense you know you're going to be an assassin you've got to learn where guards are going to be positioned the best time and place to assassinate a target and to do this you're going to have to go on some really menial quests. The quests are pretty much always the same in every city and for all nine of the assassination targets. Uh, you're going to pickpocket people, you're going to interrogate people, which is just you basically beating the crap out of them with your fists. And then the worst of all is when you have to eavesdrop on people, which eavesdropping means you sit on a bench, you target the person with a trigger, and you just press a button to listen to what they're going to say. That's it. That's your whole skill is just sitting on a bench and listening to what they're going to say. Now it is true that as you progress further in the game, the guards get more and more aware that there's an assassin in the city, so you have to be careful. You can't run around the streets knocking people over, causing trouble. The guards are going to spot you and they're going to start coming after you. But when they do, it doesn't matter because you're a master of the blade, so once you get a hang of the combat system, you can pretty much take care of every guard in the city. And if not, you can run from rooftop to rooftop trying to hide. And what you see in the top left corner is your stealth meter. When it turns yellow, it means that you're in an area where guards are somewhat aware that there's somebody in the city that shouldn't be in the city. So if you do anything really crazy, like stab somebody out in public, they're going to notice and immediately start chasing you. When it turns red and it starts blinking, it means that guards are aware that there's an assassin a few feet away from them. They're on the lookout for anything. So even if you bump into somebody or you just look nasty at somebody, they're going to come right after you. When you're getting chased, you generally want to get up onto the rooftops. And this is a pretty cool thing where you're just going to be hopping from roof to roof, uh, trying to get away from them. And you want to break their line of sight. And that's by climbing up buildings, uh, moving quickly, getting behind structures. And as soon as the line of sight is broken, your meter on the left goes to yellow. And at that point, you want to hide inside a bale of hay and just basically wait until they get tired of looking for you. Uh, and it takes, you know, about 10 or 15 seconds before they get tired of it. And then you're free to go about your business. Now, in small spurts, this is kind of cool to pickpocket a guy here or there or to run up and just assassinate somebody for no reason, just some guy on the street or to sneak along the rooftops and take out all of the archers. But when you consider that this is all you're going to be doing for 10 to 15 hours of the game, it does get a little bit repetitive, which is unfortunate because the main assassination quests are actually really cool. Though Ubisoft is selling this as a game where you can choose how you want to kill somebody, that's not really how it plays out. You're going to have one specific time and one specific area where you're going to be able to assassinate your main target. And generally you have two options, either to run straight in there and fight everybody, or to sneak around the side and try to get a self-assassination and then uh, run away back to the bureau where you are kind of have your own safety net. And that's where you get your missions and that's also where you complete your missions. The controls for Assassin's Creed are really inventive. 
uh, you basically use the face buttons as uh, different parts of your body. So you're, you're kind of acting as a puppeteer, and they even describe this in the game as you being a puppeteer. So one button is going to activate your head, which is you know to look at specific items. Then you have two buttons, one for each hand. One will be your weapon hand. Another one is for your off hand. Uh, these are also used when trying to climb. Uh, and then you're going to use uh, one button for your legs, and you're basically just going to hold this down to run, to jump. Uh, and all of these things that you can do are modified by holding down one of the triggers so that when you're not holding down the trigger, you're kind of in casual mode. Uh, this is when you're going to do things that a normal citizen might do. And when you hold down the trigger, you're going to go to an extreme mode, which is this is when you're jumping from roof to roof. This is when you're climbing buildings. This is when you're basically leaping at guards to uh, stab them in the throat, which, which looks very cool, but maybe isn't the most practical thing to do in the middle of a crowd. So the controls do take a little bit of time to get used to, but once you get to hang them, they're actually really fun. Uh, it's really simple. In a lot of ways, it feels sort of like a simplified version of maybe what Prince of Persia next gen might be, especially when you're jumping around from rooftop to rooftop. Assassin's Creed's biggest issue is really its story. Uh, we don't want to spoil anything, but you do play as two characters in Assassin's Creed. We won't tell you who the other character is outside of Altair, but you basically switch between these two characters between every assassination. And the second character you play as, the whole storyline involved in that is awful. It has no purpose whatsoever of being involved in the story. In fact, the big twist of the game is revealed in the first five minutes, so imagine if you were watching The Sixth Sense and five minutes into the movie they told you that Bruce Willis was dead, kind of make the rest of the movie seem stupid, and that's what happens in Assassin's Creed. And every time that you're in this other personality, it's just a pain. And unfortunately, while the big cities are really cool and climbing around is a lot of fun, uh, all that potential is wasted on going back to very old game conventions of completing simple, almost mindless quests and there's just a lot of minutia in Assassin's Creed that didn't need to be there. So unfortunately, the game that was going to revolutionize the industry is actually a game that falls a little bit flat on its face. That doesn't mean that you can't enjoy Assassin's Creed, and some people certainly will get a lot of joy out of this game. But there's just far too many areas where the game goes wrong to really give it a very high recommendation. Assassin's Creed is the kind of game where you're better off probably renting it for a weekend than actually spending 60 bucks to buy it and own it forever, because you're only going to want to play it once, and you may not even want to finish it at that. For the full written review of Assassin's Creed, you can check it out on IGN.com.